it's another week in the foyer reference household and it's another quid promo ot Ooh. there are friends there are lovers and there are netflix humpers <laughs> shout outs to our dreamiest of friends and lovers dan and caleb from netflix and swill every time something is beautiful or worth all of the scorn i'm always tweeting at these fellas Mm. Thank you so much for being our pals along around the town. Um, and we might just let you win in Squid Games. <laughs> Take the promo away. Hello, my name is Dan and I'm one of the hosts of Netflix and Swill, an independent fan podcast all about the streaming service Netflix. If you ever want to know what content to watch next or just want to know what's going on with Netflix in general... We cover all of that with our own unique brand of humor, and I think it's something you'll really enjoy. If that sounds like something that interests you, please check us out at netflixandswill.com or on your podcast app of choice. Friends and squatter bloat lovers, welcome back to the For Your Reference podcast. You got your host, Katie. And Oti. Brood over the state of humanity and hide behind the facade of biblical destiny. Oh. Enter the D&D realm of the power of friendship with Netflix's The Sandman this week. Hoo-hoo. Hoo-hoo-hoo. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Crusty, crusty, crusty. All right. Let's get into general stats and information. And uh, as a side note, I'm very excited to talk about the game and sort of IP all around the networks and the streaming. But this Sandman was based on The Sandman by Neil Gaiman, Sam Keith and Mike Drigenberg. It was released, this particular iteration was released in August of 2022 on Netflix. In way of cast, we have Tom Sturridge, who no one is asking, but during my peak Twilight forums was a fantasy casting for Edward. Wow. Boyd Holbrook, he's the casting of my heart chambers. I love seeing him, by the way. Mm-hmm. He's been in a lot of things we've been watching lately. Vivian Achimpong, Patton Oswald, Kirby Howe Baptiste, and Gwendolyn Christie. Beautiful, beautiful wow. Yeah, and Eddie Caranja. Woohoo! I'm just going to ignore that, like, <laughs> two minutes before this recording, you saw his name and you needed to claim your kin. <laughs> It's Kenyan, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's start off with first impressions, what we do around her. Uh, Metallica aside, um, uh, OG law aside, um, what did you know about Neil Gaiman's Sandman and what did you think about this show? Zero. Knew nothing about it. Okay. <laughs> but but you, you I, were aware of the lore of like the, the sand in children's eyes to get them to sleep, right? Yeah, but I never really bothered. I don't know. Neil Gaiman is an acquired taste. Um, okay. Well, um, Catholic boy included. I thought you would be into that. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I never really bothered. Um, But people were excited because Sandman was coming on Netflix and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll watch it. Um, just because to see what what it's all about. And I was pleased. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Okay, interesting. Uh, Someone that I'm very pleased by is our friend and lover, Julio. Shout outs to Julio um, because he was very excited to hear us talk about the Sandman, but I guess time will tell if he does enjoy this particular episode. Um, Because from what I understand, the Sandman has been in the works or trying to be able to execute it in a way that is satisfying satisfactory to all of the fanboys star wars and game of thrones and lord of the rings aside um so and i I can kind of understand it and there is a theme that i want to talk about in regards to neil gaiman in general so i'll just focus on this show um i didn't know much like you said um aside from the law um all in all i enjoyed it even though ot will make sure to say that i complained like (laughs) for the first three episodes on every scene you did but was i wrong though you are okay all right (laughs) what were you expecting we've got some (laughs) self-awareness training we need to do friends and lovers but um you know the thing i love about you ot Mm -hmm. you you make it a a stance to be against or opposite to my opinions but by the end of the recording you agree with me i doubt that will happen here though well let's see which orifice is my sand ends up in yours my love (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, generally, I did have some qualms, quarrels and quandaries, but we'll get to it. Um, all in all, uh, there were some moments to be enjoyed. There were some slow moments that I didn't necessarily care for, but when there were moments that were worked, they absolutely worked. The thing that I would say is what made it work wasn't the central character, which was Morpheus or Dream, which becomes a problem when he's the main character. Oh. Any sort of levity was not offered through him. Any sort of um, learning or growth for a character was absolutely not through him. You reckon? Because I think at the end of it, we, we get to see him a bit grown, don't we? Like he start, he's learning to relinquish a bit, a little more control, a little more control to um, Lucien, you know? That's, that's a bit of growth. He understands that he doesn't have to control everything. But after all the amount of episodes. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway. Generally, I enjoyed it. I, In essence, I enjoyed the Thar, eh? um, but the practical didn't necessarily deliver for me. The first theme that I wanted to talk about is Neil Gaiman works. Because when you when we put it on the tapestry of... The Sandman is offering through Netflix. We have Good Omens through Amazon. And then we have Mm. American Gods through Stars. Mm. And the, I I think, you know, and I I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Like if you love Imagine Dragons, all of the songs could sound the same, but it can still give you different sort of sensory experiences. (laughs) And I guess you could also say Guillermo del Toro as well. Like, you know, there are going to be some sort of symbols of Catholicism with Guillermo del Toro Um, and maybe not strictly to Christianity, but you're going to have some sort of law. Um, And sometimes that does relate to Christianity in regards to like heaven and hell um, in Sandman or even just American gods or literally good omens. Right. Mm. Um, So I would say of those three that we're talking about, I would say American Gods is the better offering. I think tonally it really delivers. There was something that felt a bit, not necessarily sanitized, but it felt like there were punches that were held um, with the Netflix sort of format. I don't feel like they held anything back per se. When you're going to compare it to American Gods and Good Women, I think American Gods is slightly better than the rest. Um, but to a point, I think what Sandman does is what I, what he failed to do in American Gods is making us care about Dream a bit more, I think, sooner than what we, we even thought Shadow Moon would be. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like in taking going through Dream's... Um, experiences and everything that he had to go through we get to learn who he is as a, as a, as a character in this world and why he cares or doesn't really care you know and his drive for revenge and him trying to f- sort of balance oh should i revenge against these people who've locked me up for almost a century or what should i do next well i think if we're talking about the the dynamic of not always an old but like a grumpy man that you know has has help with friends along the way um morpheus was more like clint eastwood in gran torino where you would really want to try to strive to be sam neil and hunt for the world of people okay. Like he was, uh, he was just so unnecessarily morose and I, I didn't care for him. But in regard to the Neil Gaiman works, I do like that you acknowledge that the American Gods delivers in regards to aesthetic, cinematography, tone, vulgarity, dialogue. Come on, you've got Ian McShane there. I think you can't have your titty in everything. I think that's the only reason. If you had your titty oh, in here. Oh, yes. It would, it would be head and shoulders above. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're doing it right, your titters in your eyes whenever you're looking. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I just thought it was interesting. I, I just think it's interesting when you have, you know, the works of Neil Gaiman, for example, and you see it translated through different networks or through different streaming. Um, and I, I do feel like there were moments that potentially, I don't know, they kind of care bared the situation. Oh, um, they kind of woodland creature the situation. Um, when I really feel like we could have got into some depths um, with the subject matter of the Sandman. Speaking of a fundamental uh, qualm, quarrel, and quandary that we had with each other was not necessarily the law, 
but the intensity of consequences. So um, mm. we will talk about the characters. I, you know, with Umbrella Academy, um, we always talk about reading the first volume of The Boys, but it did come into fruition with the most recent season um, of The Boys. But, you know, I do try and um, do research for especially, you know, shows that are adapted from like comic books or novels, from example. But I kind of wanted to stay where the TV show was. The only real thing that I researched was Desire because I wanted to learn more about Desire because we didn't really learn more about Desire um, Mm. in this particular TV show. So I feel like the the law wasn't necessarily rich. It was understandable enough. My qualm, quarrel, quandary was the intensity of consequences. And I think, I don't know, like just based off of the little scraps OT and I have been having every episode of season one of The Sandman, I imagine this is going to take up a good chunk of this um, particular review episode. So let's talk about the law, just so we're all on the same page if you'll pardon the pun. We have Sandman who his particular realm is about dreams. There are seven siblings in Dream's family called the Endless and there's only four that have appeared in season one. We have Destiny, Dream, Death and the twins Desire and Despair. Mm -hmm. So everything works in the balance. We even talk about or, you know, whether you believe it or not, there's a presence of hell in the Sandman sort of Netflix universe. Right. So if we focus on Morpheus, he controls the dreaming, right? Mm. And he, it's its not just, you know, helping kids go to sleep, but it's literally the whole mechanism of the, the conscious sort of being and the lucid sort of dreaming, right? Mm. He kind of exists as the conduit between these two sort of realms. Anything that is, is, is um, I guess, in the unconscious is his sort of realm, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Like broad optics, I understand that. What I didn't understand or I didn't necessarily care for was, you know, there was such a big importance specifically from Morpheus because he had this heightened sense of self-importance, which is very clear. But he was like, oh, you know, if this doesn't happen, then dreaming will cease to exist. Okay, bro. Like, <laughs> who cares? Who cares? People care. People who have loved ones who are not able to wake up from their sleeping because, what? Well, you know, we had Unity Kincaid's grandmother who slept for years, mm. you know, and she couldn't wake up. That's one of the effects of him being taken away. So imagine if the dreaming completely collapses and the effect it would have on society. Okay, so we need to, we need to actually talk about this probably because I think this is part of the problem with religion, but even in here, with creating a mythos in which applies to all circumstances. Yeah. Because even while the dreaming existed, people were dying in their sleep or sleeping forever. So what's the fucking difference? He's just hiding behind a biblical facade no the difference is now this would be widespread people dying in their sleep is the work of death you know it's their time that's fine but it's not death that's what you pointed out to me when we're watching the show he doesn't kill them they just they just stay in purgatory for sleeping big whoop (laughs) you mean i don't have to pay bills and go to a nine to five yeah send me to the purgatory motherfucker not everyone wants to check out like that just like put some wine and some IV and I'll be <laughs> fine, bro. Like you can't even articulate to me. And no, I'm, I'm, I'm calling you. I'm calling out Julio. He loves Sandman so much. And come and fight everyone. Come and fight me in my personal Twitter DMs and also on our podcast DMs. I don't get it. Big whoop. I love a good dream. Imagine. You, you imagine, know, imagine the effect society would have if a million people went to sleep and only 200,000 woke up. You know, it's, okay. it's, <laughs> like, like I don't understand. Like I more than anyone, every time it's close to my time of the month, Adam driver, I have some very wholesome, wholesome. I have some very wholesome dreams about Adam driver monthly, but big whoop. Like I don't care about dream. like, what does the dreams do? Not the dreams. Like if, if, if imagine it's important. Cause you're telling me it's important. You see the difference. 
If Kuriden dies a hundred times in Dragon Ball and 80% of the sagas are a quest for the Dragon Balls to revive Kuriden or English dub people Kurilin, who cares? It's of no consequence. Goku cares. Yeah, cool. You can't you can't say oh because Kuririn dies over and over, no one cares. Kuririn cares. Do you care? I do. Uh. See, and this is where you need to, to to see it as if society doesn't just operate like in a vacuum. You have people need to be out there walking, not 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 fucking falling asleep and never waking up. What the fuck is that nonsense? The world as you know it will fucking end. I am not convinced. It's it's important because they're telling me it's important, not because it's being conveyed through characters and resonating in mind heart chambers. That's what I'm saying. And even what you're saying now, and even the thought of dreaming about Adam Driver monthly doesn't save the sanctity of dreams for me personally. So that was part of the problem with me because that was the foundational sort of pull for this show. We need to restore the dreamland for Morpheus so that people can dream again. Big whoop. Didn't, didn't we also have a conversation around uh, Lucifer saying, oh, dream is the only thing keeping us away from oh, capturing the dreaming? Oh. Boo. Imagine that. Imagine, imagine a fucking you can beast only... from hell running rampant, you know, breaking the barrier between the dreaming and, 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 and what's reality. That sounds like some fucking incel shit. So because I can see a supermodel, maybe even Adam Driver, because I can see him Adam Driver and I know I'll never get Adam Driver, that's my hell. Fuck off. Well, imagine Adam Driver with fucking ton, Tony dicks. I don't know. <laughs> 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 tell, tell me you've also been having monthly dreams of Adam Driver, OT. <laughs> but that's what I'm not like. Like, it's fine that we don't agree, but I feel like no one's really bringing to the table no, I, to I, me no, why think, it's important. No, I think to you, you need to sort of. I don't need to do anything. No, 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 you, you, you need to do the work in terms of accepting that society needs people fucking being at their best to survive and to, to continue. What does that even mean? Like, Imagine half the fucking world not waking up. This is not Thanos shit. But what does it matter to me? It matters to you because, hey, I, I'd be sleeping there not waking up. Would you? Would that not matter to you? If I didn't wake up the next morning and I slept for X number of years. Okay, but now you're getting personal. No, but shit. that's the thing, right? Everyone has their own. Well, it was nice knowing you then. Enjoy. <laughs> Nighty night, Catholic boy. See, you, you're <laughs> looking at it as if, ooh, I, I don't care. I don't care as long as it doesn't happen to me. But what happens to your loved ones? See, that's the thing, right? No, it's not. <laughs> what if you were eating razor sharp candy from Candyman? Like, it's of no consequence, my love. Then if you're looking at that, that nothing has, nothing is of consequence. We spent four years following Ian McShane in American Gods doing bum fuck nothing. Uh -huh. You know, and you love it so much. At least with this, we get to see effects and consequences of A, Morpheus existing and Morpheus not existing, what he controls, who are his enemies, who are his siblings, what happens, why there's like, like they, they built the world so richly. And that, you know, it was a slow burn, but it was so many details engrossed in it. And I was like, I'm there for it. Build this world for me. I want to sploosh in it. Can I bring up an example that will hurt your feelings? Yeah. How about, um, you know, where we got all of the Avengers and the war cry, Avengers Assemble! Who cares? <laughs> like, who cares? I don't care. See, I care. Exactly. I, care. I, I, I teared up. I cried. Okay, congratulations, <laughs> but being whooped. Like, I don't care. I don't care. See, uh, uh, and then maybe you're not the audience for this. You know, you, and that's fine. Wow. Okay, Mr. Gatekeeper. I'm not even saying, like, you don't have to like everything. Okay, you well, don't have to buy into everything. Well, well, well let's, let's take a couple of steps back. If we were talking about, you know, um, American gods through way of stars. Let's talk about Spartacus. Spartacus, because you're saying nothing matters and you're correct. Unless the show does the groundwork, whether you resonate or not is a personal sort of preference. But whether, if it doesn't do the groundwork, there's no chance to have the resonance. But 
But when I say Spartacus, you feel something, right? And you know, when I say, why was it important for the rebellion to be successful? You know why. Because it did the groundwork. Then who cares? That, that, I could ask the same no, thing. You, you know? Would you say who cares about Spartacus? You would not. Just playing devil's advocate, someone would, Julio would come in and say, who cares? Well, you Julio know? can get in the bin like you then. <laughs> If the rebellion doesn't matter to anyone, it doesn't affect you. If you're, if you're, um, but how about you? Do you personally care about Spartacus and the rebellion? Yeah. Then fuck off. But there are because- out there that don't give a fuck, you know? You were you were using a specific example about you never waking up, and then you're generally talking about how no one cares about Spartacus. It's a moot point. <laughs> I'm just saying, you can't say that. I can say whatever yeah, I want. I, and that's fine. We can all accept that. A, you don't think that the effects and the consequences of A, Morpheus existing doesn't stock up to whatever you think it, it should be. Mm-hmm. To me, I think it does. And I think they're still building the world where we get to know more and more about Morpheus as a character but do you see and how, the world itself. But do you see how I'm not trying to change your mind? But I'm you, not trying to change your mind either. Bro, you've been so bent on being like, you can't do this, you can't do that. I can do whatever I want, motherfucker. And that's fair enough. I'm not even trying to get, keep this shit. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even know why. Because trust me, friends and lovers, we'll get to our Christmas special and I, I, I doubt there'll be near a 10 in place for the Sandman. <laughs> there'll be near a 10. I don't even know why you're fighting so fucking hard for this show. We're allowed to watch things and enjoy it or, or you know, um, um, accept it or absorb it however we want, OT. And I agree. I want to talk to Morpheus. And I agree. Especially having watched Neil Gaiman's shit before. I know it's a slow burn. So I'm there for the journey. And I know that it's going to continue building up and building up slowly. So I'm not going to write anything off and feeling like as if, oh, Morpheus is not going to do shit. He's annoying. He's not going to learn. He's not going to grow. Because I know that's not true. He's shown signs of growth. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a degree to what you accept, but there is still growth. You know, we have characters who uh, are pushing him and continue to push him. And that's all we can ask for. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but friends and lovers, I think this also points out like, I'm picky with what I want to watch. OT will watch anything, even if he doesn't like it. And for me, I'm too old. <laughs> I'm too old and I've been through too much shit in my life to watch things and first of all, not say something if I have feedback. And second of all, just if I don't enjoy it, bye. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> going to. Anyway, I, I don't know why you feel the need to, at least when Adam Driver tells me to do things in my dreams, it's pleasurable. <laughs> wow. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, let's move on to the next theme, the paper thin morality. You kind of talked about it already. I kind of want to talk about hell as its own sort of topic. But when I talk about the paper thin morality, I, again, I do think it has to do with the ratings or the audience that they were particularly trying to target. I feel like American Gods worked because when they wanted to go all the way deep, Belquist deep, if you're nasty, they really went all the way there. Whether it's in regards to like explicit sort of content or whether it's fully, fully following through on the consequences or the impact of a particular testing of morality. And I, I guess the examples um, that I would give is, very early, um, maybe even in the first couple of episodes, we have John D. You know, we have uh, a grown man um, that has been shielded from the world and, you know, even to the detriment of his own mother. Mm. There's a lot of sentiment that he has about, oh, I need to protect this by all means possible for the sake of humanity. And it's like, you don't care about humanity. Like, why are you acting like you're on some virtuous, noble sort of quest? And I guess I could also be talking about Morpheus as well. Um, and then we've seen this in the diner orgy. Like, if you, if you want to have an orgy, that's fine. But I didn't care for the preamble of it. Um, I, I will say potential trigger warning for sexual assault, but I'm not going to get into detail. Um, but there was – so with the – worker at the diner she was crushing on the chef 
But it seemed like the chef was fucking the son. Mm. But it was hard to tell whether it was consensual or not. Felt like it was consensual. I guess what I didn't like about what I didn't like about it was if left to their own devices, humans would be so depraved. And it's like, fuck off. It's the same sort of sentiment of like, we need religion to know not to go out and punch people in the face. You know what I mean? <laughs> Morality and religion aren't mutually exclusive. And that's what I didn't necessarily care for it because they kept making these platitudes of look how evil man is. Man will stab you for no reason or out of jealous fanfare. And it's like, no, that's like, if you actually want to talk about the intricacies of the human experience, then let's fucking explore that. Let's not just have some wild, wild romp orgy inside of a diner, fuck who we want, kill who we want, um, sodomize who we want, right? Yeah, I, I'm with you on this. That episode was <laughs> was not great. You could get in the bin anytime. Yeah. Um, I don't understand the messaging they were trying to pass across because A, humans don't work like that. Yeah. Um, I think they went to the sort of uh, base level of, ooh, take choices or to take everything away from them. Then they'll run amok just because. Yeah. We'll fuck any hole just because. Yeah. We'll kill anyone because it's Friday. Yeah. You know, I don't think anyone fucking operates like that. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not sure what the episode was trying to get at. I'm with you on that. That was bullshit. And I think it was also... um. It, John was the problem. Like John was the problem in that, I don't know, he wanted to prove that he could reveal the true nature of humans. And it's like, no, people bullied you, okay? And sometimes, unfucking-fortunately, that's how life works. But it doesn't mean everyone's out to stab metaphorically or fornicatingly everybody. Mm. Yeah, and the fact that, you know, and this is something that I wanted John to sort of realize as well. Her mom did a hell lot of work to get him safe. <laughs> right? He doesn't appreciate that shit. Yeah. She sacrificed herself. Yeah. For him, for his fucking lazy ass. Yeah, for what? <laughs> if there are dick backs in yeah. your sacrifice... Oh, she needed to take that back and oh, bring my amulet back, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and okay, um, I haven't got it on the list, but we always end up talking about power hierarchy. So I understand Morpheus was like trapped for like a hundred years, but those sort of trinkets, whatever you want to call them, those were all his. So even if you know, John was able to crack it and, and modify it for his own sort of purposes. Wouldn't it acknowledge its owner being Morpheus? He got knocked out a bit too quickly is my point. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what magic does. It's unpredictable as shit. So I can allow a little bit of leeway there. Okay. I'm not going to get critical. I think the only thing I'm going to get critical of is he's trapped in that shit for such a long time. And all anyone needed to do was to rub a little gap on the sand yeah. that suckled that shit. For like a hundred years. We got her body trying to do that, you know, trying to smash the glass. You don't even need to worry about the glass. Yeah. Go fucking rub your body. Go do a <laughs> belly, belly flop on the sand and just whoop. And that's it. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. She got she the bud just continues smashing the the the, the window as if it's gonna make a difference. Yeah. Uh I'm like, come on now. This is where you're like thinking, just fly there. Fly, fly to fucking Mordor. <laughs> Get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, well, let's talk about the D&D &D realm of the power of friendship. Um, they really did our Lucifer dirty, I think. Mm. And if we're talking about power hierarchy, I don't even understand. Well, let's let's lean on your your Catholic boy upbringing. Isn't Lucifer like one of the strongest? Isn't that part of what um, Beyonce fighting the temptations is all about? Because Satan is so strong. Yeah, he's strong. You know, he 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 connives and cheats and to get his way, but he's not as strong as God. But how about Morpheus? Because I don't think Morpheus is a god either. No, he's not. But it shows that there's... But Morpheus is scared of 
Lucifer, though, you know? Okay, Especially- well, let's, no, let's talk about the D&D battle because, you know, and again, shout out to Dan and Caleb. Um, and for anyone that loves uh, D&D sort of stuff, I thought it was corny. I thought it was cheesy that we've got, because it felt like this show had a budget, especially in the first couple of episodes or even throughout the first season. So the fact that it was all done through imagination, (laughs) I thought that was a bit corny. (laughs) It was quite fun, to be honest. (laughs) I enjoyed it. Uh, I just think that Dream's winning um, call wasn't as strong as I as they had made it out to be. Because I think Lucifer said anti-life, right? It was anti-life. Like, it was very definitive. And then Morpheus comes along with the power of friendship and says, hope, really? (laughs) Vomit. (laughs) Really? Uh, Hope, hope beats anti-life, eh? No way. (laughs) But even then, why don't you just end the battle at the start? Because it wasn't even like it was a muy caliente like battle to look at. So if I started, if 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 Morpheus had started with hope, would there have not been anything else to beat him with? But isn't that why he won the battle? Because there was nothing to trump hope. <laughs> it was like some Cartman sort of. Dee, 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 dee. <laughs> Yeah, I can feel the ghosts running down my <laughs> my pants right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but admit, it was a bit silly. It, it was silly. It was silly. It was silly that they didn't do a full visualization. Well, first, I thought they should have just had a fist fight, personally. Mm. Um, but even then, if they didn't have a fist fight, they just half visual, like it was like a half chub of an imagination. And then even then they failed to deliver by ending with hope. I'm like, really, really? And I'm going to repeat it again. The presence of dreams is what causes the eternal damnation. Fuck off. (laughs) Mate, we need to dissect to fucking hurt you. (laughs) Hey, I've been hurt and the dreams do nothing. (laughs) Wow. (sighs) We need to dissect why you feel the need to dissect me when I'm talking about a fucking TV show. (laughs) (laughs) Run run it to me, Steric, bruv. Don't wait for a podcast recording. (laughs) Yeah, I'm with you, though. I think that battle would have been something else. I think there was an opportunity to see. Uh, one way they did that probably was because Dream was still in his weakened state, so anything fully fledged fighting would probably be a one and down thing. You know, Lucifer would just fucking wipe the floor with him, but especially that- being in her realm already. Like it was a no go, right? But that's what's frustrating to me because it's like we're at the start of the show, and you're telling me you beat Lucifer in your weakened state. I think that's disrespectful to Lucifer. Yeah, I really didn't think he'd win. I think there would have been uh, no, but you knew because he was the, the consequence was too big. I think if the consequence was lesser, he probably loses. But the fact that oh, if if I lose, I'm gonna stay in hell forever and work for this mm. idiot. Yeah, it was never gonna happen. Also, before we move on to something else, what did you think when we we're in hell? What did you think about the black lady that called out to Morpheus, and then we saw Morpheus turn into a black man for like two seconds? He was getting the Elvis treatment. I thought that's because everyone used to be black back in the day, and that was his initial form. Okay, Gondwana man. I just thought that was it, but I think he came up with an explanation that you just see what you want to see in Morpheus. No, I think I think it was Julio. All oh, right, it. it was either Julio or Dan. Um, so let me raise a question then. So everyone that looks at Morpheus just sees a white wants to see a white man. Even the black characters just want to see a white man Whoa. as Morpheus. If that's the wow. reason, no, 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 no. If 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 that lady looks at Morpheus and sees a black man, and that's be- and the reason being that. She sees him as a black man because she wants to see a black man. Yes. And so then everyone else sees everyone him as a white else man. Everyone else in the <gasps> universe wants to see a white man being Morpheus. That's that's how you enslave the mind, OT. Yeah, that's how. I don't even know what to say to that. Well, I guess that's why Lucifer doesn't win because you see Lucifer everywhere. <laughs> well we all know i'm going to hell so let's move on to the killer convention again this comes back to the paper thin morality um that we had throughout the show there was so much sentiment of oh it's like 
it's kind of like the the Adam and Eve sort of paradox, right? Where they're saying that these serial killers are terrible, but they exist because they're terrible. So it's like if we're saying that there needs to be a presence of serial killers on earth, then that doesn't make them terrible. That makes them part of the plan. The same thing with Eve, with the knowledge of good and evil. She wasn't necessarily a treacherous wench by taking the knowledge of good and evil because that was part of the plan for man to fall, correct? Nah, she a wench. <laughs> <laughs> she can be she can be a rightful wench though. Uh um yeah, so with, with the nightmares and the purpose they solve and them going I'm not talking about nightmares I'm talking about serial killers or we're saying serial killers are nightmares well Corinthian was created as a nightmare you know he took his job super serious but what see that doesn't make sense because he's a nightmare in the dreaming but then you have real life serial killers that's what I'm saying it doesn't apply because they were trying to put morality of oh look at look at these depraved serial killers which they fucking are yeah cool right but look at these depraved people but if the plan was to have a presence of danger so people can learn the good and the joy in life then they're not necessarily bad by default because they're your fucking chess pieces of the same set anyway yeah i see that um but then i think we're going into the sort of psychological um realm in 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 trying to discuss do we have free will do we are we there for a reason are we are we just chess pieces you know so you're saying i'm looking for depth that isn't there (laughs) Hey-o. <laughs> Not necessarily. Okay, so what Corinthians just is he fucking eats people's eyes or takes people's eyes in the dreaming, right? Uh-huh. Because he's a nightmare. But he's breaking through the mold and coming to reality and killing people in real but life. what's the excuse for all of the serial killers that existed before he broke loose? That's what I'm saying. People continue to die. So why... So it doesn't even, like, the insurance policy for Morpheus doesn't stretch across all of policies. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't make sense. But you're it's, saying, a, it's a sheer scale, isn't it? But you're saying all of these people are suffering for a purpose or they're suffering because the dreaming doesn't exist but there was suffering while dreaming existed you see what i'm saying there were people that were doing disgusting depraved things as serial killers before corinthian even broke loose so the mythology already has a flawed core that's what i'm saying Eh, but corinthian is sparring the morn you know he's he's fucking a cult legend already but do you do you acknowledge that these people existed before corinthian broke yeah out? of course there have always been fucking killers out there but corinthian went out there he fucking created a cult following just based on his efficiency and the sheer <laughs> the sheer amount of time he did it he, he spent such a long time killing people thought he had to be some copycat or some some you know apprentice you're just ignoring what i'm saying you agreed with it and now you're ignoring what i'm saying because it's true the mythology and the mythos of this show doesn't explain everything which again is part of the problem with religion like it's trying to answer things that can't be answered because that's fucking life right and what i also didn't like was morpheus kept saying he was these are the rules rules are rules right but he didn't need to take lida's husband away uh, he had already died in real life, though. So what's the point of? But who cares? Let them live. Let them be happy. I thought dream dreaming was supposed to make people feel happy and fulfilled. It would have. Are we, are we also ignoring how? Though. Are we also ignoring how Unity was like a literal sleeping beauty, and someone slid it into her while she was unconscious? Are we ignoring that as well? Yeah, and they glossed over that shit as if it was. I had you and I was sleeping. It's all right. <laughs> and even if I leave your man Morpheus alone for a second, like if we talk about death, shout outs to Kirby. I think we know her the most from Why Women Kill. Mm. And I guess while we hear shout outs to your one and only wifey, Lucy Lou. Um, I didn't, again, you presented it in this show. Therefore, I am going to discuss and say why it didn't work. We have a we have a whole episode dedicated around death, right? Mm. Being being that sort of um, comforting, guiding hand that takes people from the mortal flesh into the afterlife, whatever that looks like, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have a moment where she takes a baby away. Yeah. And we're not going to go into too much detail, but feel free to skip ahead a couple of minutes, friends and lovers. That's disgusting. I didn't like that. And I know you can feel like the gravity in the room has fallen, but that's part of the problem. Trying to put a whole mythos around the way 
unspeakable things happen in humanity makes it hard to understand why a baby would be taken so early from life. And I didn't like that. That's what I'm saying. It didn't work. I think they're just showing us shit that happens now. So, you know, they're not. That's what I'm saying. So what's what's the point of the presence of death? What's the point of the presence of dreaming where shitty, undeniable, unspeakable things are going to happen anyway? Again, I'll just say skill. You know, the reason why the dreaming is important and why people can't all bloody die is the skill. People still die in their sleep. People still don't wake up from their sleep, you know. Um, but the scale again is what we're talking about. What does that mean? The sheer amount of people who would not wake up. The sheer amount of people who would die. The sheer amount of people who would either be terrorized or won't be able to fall asleep ever again. You okay, know? well, without without getting too real, but what's the difference between what's happening in real life anyway? There's no difference. You see what I'm saying? So why have these guardians of the human experience where people are fucking suffering anyway? That's what I don't understand. That's the same thing why, like, it comes back to the, the intensity and the weight of the consequences. It doesn't make sense to me because people are suffering anyway and they're picking and choosing when to play God. I don't know, man. I don't know what I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> to make you understand this or to make you see at least how I'm looking at it. You know, it's it's not because, oh, people will never suffer because that's the way the world is. They're not trying to say, oh, we're going to mitigate anything bad from happening ever because that's not what, why they're there. But that's not what I'm saying. They're also not taking accountability for the shitty things that happen. So it's like only the things that we want to talk about are the things that are in our control. But anyway, let's move on. Um, let's move on. Let's go to something a bit lighter. Let's talk about Hob Gadlin. So this was Morpheus's way of trying to make a friend it was sort of his experiment to see how long he'd go you know wishing that he'd die and he kept on going he kept on finding a reason to live i asked for levity and that was your answer <laughs> because it's the truth isn't it begging for the sweet reprieve that kiss of death yeah because how long is too long how how long is if you have immortality then is a hundred years too long i don't know you've stood to prove that you can be stubborn as hell in this recording so <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in another hundred years, my love. <laughs> um, the, there are many characters we can talk about, but I want to talk about one of my favorites, Matthew the Raven. I really enjoyed Matthew. Um, I didn't realize it was Patton Oswald, but it, it definitely made sense. Um, he reminded me, friends and lovers, go and check out our first official reference to Igar Station, where we covered Miyazaki masterpieces. Uh, he reminded me of Calcifer. Um, and I'm mm. even talking about the English dub of Howl's Moving Castle. Wow. Billy Crystal, I believe. Um, like he provided a sense of levity and if you'll pardon the pun, a bit of a spark, you know, something to ignore night you through the dreary sort of um offerings that morpheus would bring like i thought matthew was a lot of fun yeah he was fun i think i, I think it's what dream needed at the time as well uh -huh. just someone to shoot it straight with him the um, audience needed him as well i think yes i think if you just had morpheus there uh brooding the whole time without any sort of you know <laughs> Someone to cut through the tension. Yeah. I think Matthew did that well. He's, he's a very good addition to this. Yeah, absolutely agree. Um, Something we didn't talk about was the tonal shift. It was like halfway through the season. So we knew where we were getting to in retrieving the three items that Morpheus had. And then the last half for me kind of waned off in, in regards to my particular sort of interest with the vortex with Rose. What did you think, even before we talk about Rose, what did you think about the tonal change in season one? I didn't mind it because then we get to see a lot more of the world. And I think that's what, at least for the first season, you get to do this sort of things. Okay. You know, it's not like when you're watching Hero, it wasn't just about save the cheerleader, save the world 24-7, you know. We, we, we moved to Sala Bay, came back to Hero, you know. So I appreciated the fact that we sort of shifted our, we shifted our attention to Rose Walker and seeing 
what this entity can do, you know, and what that means in the world. So what did you, so we've talked, like we've talked a lot about the law um, and what how it's been presented in the TV show. I don't understand because for me, a vortex is an inevitability, right? Every so phenomena, there's always going to be a vortex, right? Mm. So the presence of it makes sense. And in some ways you could even say it's natural. So then how then is it a bad thing that needs to be destroyed if its very purpose is to exist? Um, I think it's it's just because something is inevitable to happen, you still have to find a way to deal with it. Like, oh, asteroids are fucking inevitable, but what if one comes trying to come through down to Earth, are we not going to try and shoot the sh- shit out of it? And be like, oh, yeah, might as well sing Kumbaya. No, I'm just going to breathlessly yell at everyone and don't look up. <laughs> I did that specially for you. <laughs> <laughs> you really teed that up for me. Thank you. Uh I didn't find it. I didn't find it as if it was flawed that, you know, we need to. Not that it's flawed, but they were saying that a vortex is going to happen and it makes sense that there's a vortex, but then they had to get rid of it. And I was like, well, then why is the vortex there then? That's what I didn't understand. No, they said the vortex happened because Dream spent so long away and it happened when it was meant to be with Unity. But Unity was fucking unconscious for all that time and that's why it went to Rose. So there's a cause and effect and they were trying to fight, figure out, oh, what was the cause and why did it come? Uh-huh. And they still have to deal with it just because it, it, it's going to destroy everything, you know? It has to be controlled. It has to, to go. And I didn't find, I didn't have a problem with it. I didn't have a problem with it. Okay. You got a problem with something though. I do. <laughs> um, Lucian, I kind of want Lucian to have some um, cojones. Like I really feel like... Lucian could be the revolution that like the dreaming needs. Oh, she had a hundred odd years to be the revolution. <laughs> no, but I think she was a loyal to IC, wasn't she? Yeah, she was loyal. She was loyal. I think it was crap how uh, Morpheus treated her once he got back. You know, I think he had to understand or at least to appreciate that things are never the same once you left, especially for such a long time, you know. And I think that's where you didn't see particularly the sort of growth you wanted or a bigger growth that you wanted. But that's why we got to see Morpheus sort of being like, hey, that was my bad. I treated you as if no time had passed. At least, you know, I'll try and do better. I wish you would critique these characters to the level that you critiqued me, you motherfucker. <laughs> um, speed round. Thoughts on Constantine? So this is a like gender swapping for the Constantine that you know. Thoughts, feelings? Yeah, I, I thought they were going to do the love thing there. They probably are going to do it in season two. So what if that's part of the dreaming destiny, bro? Maybe it is. You need to have a, 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 a dreaming conjuring demon slayer, eh? <laughs> Wow. Uh, either way, I really didn't care for that nonsense just because of the love angle. Then again, if Morpheus has to be bloody or try and understand humans, might as well get banged in the process. Okay. I really don't think there's anything else to say. <laughs> <laughs> apparently wanna... there's nothing bigger than the human experience other than fucking sex and killing each other so might as well oh so you are acknowledging that there is lack of dimension in the <laughs> law and the consequences of this show i got my soundbite 60 minute friends and lovers <laughs> <sighs> the only thing i would say is i want to learn more about desire she looks interesting she, he, and they. Mm-hmm. Uh, according to the comics, again, friends and lovers, this is the only research that I did. Desire is described as medium height and smelling faintly of summer peaches. Oh, I don't know if the peaches are from Georgia. Um, they are a strikingly beautiful, androgynous figure of gender fluidity. They can be male, female, both, or neither, as the situation warrants. Good. So we'll see you next Pride, Sandman lovers. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Thank you, friends and lovers. Who knew? I didn't realize this would be a recording that you felt the need to fight me on. Or maybe you're just jealous because Adam Driver visits me monthly. Yeah, I need to need need to think about that a bit. Maybe I'll join him. OT the cuckold. <laughs> <laughs> Cucks unite. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. That's the Avengers we've all been waiting for. Wow. And who said dreams didn't come true, friends and lovers? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, 
Oh, wow. Um, I need to go sit somewhere else and cool down. We're going to finish off in a segment we call for your reference, OT. Uh, just because I sort of liked American Gods up until Orlando Jones was kicked out. So watch season one and two and then of American Gods and then you can toss it in the bin. You need to give a complete reference. It, it, it's either all of it. You need to give all of reference. Season one and two of American Gods. If we're talking about nailing the angels and demons of it all, I will reference happiness and today i will choose joy with the two popes jesus <laughs> nothing better than two old, two old white men telling you about life eh might as well take it from morpheus bro i'd love it. i'd rather be in morpheus's dreaming than in those fucking catholic catholic wankers world why are you accepting my reference you motherfucker <laughs> If you want OT to incept your dreams on Twitter and Instagram, we're at for your FPod. Write us an email at hellofforpodcast.com. We're also on hashtag justice for vortexes podcast if you like to leave a rating and review. And we'll see you guys next week. See ya. Yeah.